morning to all. As we begin our worship service this morning, let us bow our heads and pray, inviting and invoking the presence of God in our midst. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Let us look unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endures the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. May the beginning of our worship service be in the name of the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we praise God this morning, let us join together in singing from English hymn number 16, verses 1, 2, and 5. English hymn number 16, verses 1, 2, and 5. Let us look to God in prayer. God our Creator, we adore you and we acknowledge that you are the source of all our being. We humble ourselves before your majesty and accept your authority over our lives. We praise your name for preserving us under the shadow of your loving wings. We thank you for not rejecting us. Instead, you sent us your only begotten Son for us who has redeemed us from the curses of our sin and death. Because we have faith in Christ, we dare to approach God with confidence. Let us remember that we are unworthy to stand in God's holy presence. So let us examine ourselves and ask for His forgiveness. Let us humble ourselves before the Lord and approach Him with reverence. I request you all to repeat the prayer of confession after me. Merciful God, have mercy upon us. We remember and acknowledge our sins and shortcomings before Thee. We confess that we have sinned. 
knowingly and unknowingly through thoughts words and deeds many a times we have not been thankful towards all thy blessings we have received we have fallen short in showing your love towards our brethren we seek thy forgiveness and ask you to forgive all our sins cleanse us of all our righteousness bestow us with new life through your son jesus christ and fill our hearts with love joy and peace lord help us to live according to your will for we pray this in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen all ye who have repented of your sins and are seeking the grace of god and remission of sins hear the comfortable message of the gospel the lord himself says upon you he that cometh to me i will in no wise way cast out your sins and iniquities will i remember no more though your sins be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool a new heart also will i give you i will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgment and do them amen merciful father we remember and thank thee for all thy goodness bestowed upon us lord we thank thee for upholding us in your gracious hands and leading us in thy righteous path thereby saving us from the clutches of eternal destruction and death we thank you for being the head and anchor of our personal life family life and social life we thank you for all the happiness and pleasures that you have given to us lord we come into thy presence relying on your holy word and accepting thy lordship in our lives when we falter you guide us when we are weak you grant us your strength you dwell in us always dear lord this we pray in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen let us affirm our faith in unison as we pronounce the apostles creed together i believe in god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified dead and buried he descended into hell the third day he rose again from the dead he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of god the father almighty from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and life everlasting amen the scripture reading for this sunday is taken from the first letter of paul to the corinthians chapter 3 verses 5 to 13 the first letter of paul to the corinthians chapter 3 verses 5 to 13 what after all is apollos and what is paul only servants through whom you came to believe as the lord has assigned to each his task i planted the seed apollos watered it but god has made made it grow so neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only god who makes things grow the one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor for we are co workers in god's service and you are god's fields god's building by the grace god has given me i laid a foundation as a wise builder and someone else is building on it but each one should build with care for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid which is jesus christ if anyone builds on this foundation using gold silver costly stones wood hay or straw their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light it will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each person's work here ends the scripture reading 
This morning we have in our midst Reverend Dr. K. M. Samuel. Reverend Dr. K. M. Samuel was born and brought up in Kerala and worked as an evangelist in the Marthoma Church at Hosakote Mission of Bangalore District for several years. Later, he completed his Bachelor of Divinity from the United Theological College, Bengaluru, and was ordained in 1978. He served as a pastor in the Marthoma Church thereon. He further completed his doctoral studies in Christian ministry from the United States of America. Currently, after retirement, he is residing at the Krishnamitra Ashram in Ankola district, Karwar, Karnataka, as a permanent member. On behalf of the UBM Church Council, we would like to thank Reverend Dr. K. M. Samuel for accepting our invitation to share the word of God this morning. Before Reverend Dr. K. M. Samuel shares the word of God with us, the praise and worship team will lead us in a time of singing. This morning, shall we lift up our voices to praise the name of Jesus. On the wings of a snow white dove, He sends His pure sweet love, a sign from above. Around us, when evils come, the body grows weak, the spirit grows numb. When these things beset us, he doesn't forget us, he sent down his love on the wings of a dove. On the wings of a snow white dove, he sends his pure, sweet love, sign from above. On the wings of a dove, I know I had prayed on the flood many days. He searched for land. Various ways, troubles he had some, but he wasn't forgotten. He sent down his love on the wings of a dove, on the wings of a snow white dove. He sends his pure, sweet love. Sign from above On the wings of a dove On the wings of a snow white dove He sends his pure sweet love Sign from above On the wings of a dove Sign from above On the wings of a dove Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. May we all who are created in the image of God so fearfully and wonderfully, let us all lift our voices as we sing this song, All Heavens Declare. Declares the glory of the risen Lord. Who can compare with the beauty of the Lord? Forever he will be the lamp on the throne. Oh 
May God's name be glorified. My dear Pastor Deepak, members of the Basan Mission Churches in Bombay, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today it is the Church Planting Sunday for the, all the members of the Basan Mission Churches. I am happy to share the word of God with you. The passage chosen for this day is the first letter of Paul to Corinthians chapter 3 verses 5 to 13. Let us listen to the word of God. Who then is Paul? Who is Sophilos? What ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his labor. Uh, for we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Let us have a word of prayer before we listen to the word of God. Dear Lord our Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your message, your word. We pray that you may speak to each one of us through your word so that we will be transformed through the Holy Spirit and will be blessed this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All the countries in the world are now under great fear, fear of COVID-19. Thousands of people are becoming ill each day due to this illness. The coronavirus is spreading rapidly. All the people in the world are being afraid about the illness. But we have our security in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is our hope and our peace in each one of our lives. As we listen to the word of God, let us understand that Christ speaks to us. Let us listen to Jesus the Lord. I want to call your attention to the book of Samuel chapter 3 verses 1 onwards if you read we, speak, we understand about the boy Samuel. Samuel was entrusted to the Lord's ministry. He was dedicated by his mother Hannah and he was brought to the temple and Eli was in charge of looking after Samuel. Samuel was sleeping one night in the temple, in the, on the one side of the temple and the priest Eli was sleeping on the other side of the temple. But uh, when Samuel went to sleep, he heard a voice calling him by his name. Samuel, Samuel. When Samuel heard the voice, he thought that 
Eli, the priest, is calling him. Therefore, he ran to Eli and asked, Why did you call me? I am ready. And then Eli said, Son, I did not call you. You may go and sleep. Three times he had to come to Eli ask him, to ask him whether Eli called him or not. At the third time, Eli told him that I did not call you. It may be God who is calling you. Go and sleep. When you hear the name again, you may tell to the Lord, Lord, your servant listens. Speak, Lord. If you pray like that, you will hear God's voice. And then we find that Samuel goes and goes to sleep. And he heard the voice of God, Samuel, Samuel, and he answered to the Lord, Lord, your servant listens, speak. And then he was given the message for the people of Israel. Samuel, the small boy, was given the message of God to be preached to the priest and to the people of Israel. Samuel could not understand the call of God in the beginning. Three times God called him, but he could not understand that it was God who was calling him. The word of God says that, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 7 says, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Until we know the Lord, the word of God will not be revealed to us. Let us be humble enough that we will listen to his word and understand him so that God can speak to us through his word. Today we find in this passage which I read to you that Paul is speaking to the Corinthian church. Paul was an enemy of the Christians. He was running to Damascus to destroy all those who believed Jesus. On his way to Damascus, he found that the Lord was, he, he experienced the Lord appearing to him. He found a, a the very great light and he fell down. And then he did not know what was happening. He asked, what is it? What is happening to me? And the Lord Jesus spoke to him, Saul, Saul, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Then he asked Jesus what his message was to him. Jesus asked him to be his servant, to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Therefore at that time Saul surrendered him completely to the feet of the Lord. And then afterwards we find that Ananias was sent to Saul to pray for him. He prayed for him and he was Saul was filled with the Holy Spirit. Saul became poor and he started preaching the gospel to all the people around. All the people who knew that Saul was an enemy of Christians, now they come to know that Saul is our friend, he is our man, he is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus. Therefore, we find in the Bible that Paul went to different places, established churches, and all those who heard his message were converted to Jesus Christ. We find that Paul was concerned about the Jews first, but wherever he went, the Jews did not receive him. Therefore, he turned to the Gentiles. The Gentiles received the gospel. The gospel message was given to the Gentiles who never knew the living God. Now, due to Paul's preaching, we find that several churches were established. In Corinth, Paul stayed for 18 months and preached the gospel that we read in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18. 
Paul preached the gospel to the Corinthian people and several of them believed the Lord and became Christians. They were they found their salvation through Christ. In Corinth, we find that the Corinthian church was established by Paul and then Paul was able to convey to them the message of Christ that they may grow in the fellowship of each other and also they may be founded in Christ to continue to glorify his name. Though the Corinthian church had several problems, especially division in the church, they had party spirit, but several other problems, the church members also were under the uh, clutches of Satan that they could not believe the Lord properly and continue with him. But Paul wanted to bring them to Christ and Paul was concerned that all these people should know the Lord properly and grow in the grace of the Lord. Therefore, Paul, though grieved, gave the message to the Corinthians. The message of the cross is the power of God to those who are being saved. Paul experienced it. All those who are being saved, they find power through the cross of Christ. Paul planted, planted the seed in Corinth and Apollos watered. God gave the increase and the church was growing. Therefore, he appeals to the believers to be united in Christ. According to our scripture portion that is read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 5 to 13, Paul mainly speaks of two things on which I want to emphasize and speak to you. The first thing Paul says is that Christ is the foundation of the church. Our faith is grounded in Christ. Our faith is founded in Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 10 and 11 we read, According to the grace of God which was given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Paul very clearly says that Jesus Christ is the foundation on which we build our churches. The church planning should happen if only we have Christ as our foundation. If only we ourselves experience Jesus as the foundation of our faith. Several times we try due to our own effort to bring people to the Lord. But that has no value. If only we accept Jesus as our Savior and give ourselves to the Lord, then only God can use us to bring others to the Lord. This is found in, <coughs> in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 16 where Jesus in Caesarea Philippi, he asks the disciples, who do men say that I am? Jesus wanted to know whether he himself has revealed himself to the people around. Therefore he asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? And then the disciples gave different answers. Some say you are John the Baptist, some say you are Jeremiah, some say you are Elijah. All those answers were given. Then Jesus asked a very particular question, which was a personal question to the disciples. Now, what do you say that I am? Whom do you say that I am? How do you understand me? Then Paul, or Peter was the one who came forward to say that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. 
Peter's proclamation of Jesus as the Messiah was the first revelation which Peter received from the living God. He could say that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. This revelation is the foundation of our faith. We plant our churches on this foundation. If only we know that Jesus is the Son of the living God. He is the Christ. The foundation was the proclamation of the facts about the offer of Jesus Christ. Paul was fully committed to introduce men to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the foundation of the church because it is in him and him alone we experience Christ. We experience Christ as the Savior of our life. Savior means he delivers us from the clutches of sin. He delivers us from all the sinful habits. He gives us forgiveness of our sins. That is the first thing in our relation to Jesus we experience. The second thing we experience is that we find strength and power in the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ empowers us so that we will be able to stand against all the wiles of Satan. We will be able to conquer Satan in our life and in the community. During these days when we are afraid of COVID-19, we find that Christ is our strength. We need not be afraid of any diseases, any people who are against us. We should understand that we are safe in the arms of Christ. Thirdly, we find that we have the hope through Christ. The hope of Christ's second coming is our great joy. We are waiting for the Lord to come again to take us to be with Him all the days of our life. We wait that the second coming of Christ will be happening soon. All of us are, prepared, are to be prepared to receive Christ as He appears to us as our Lord who wants to take us to be with us, to be with Him in the heavenly places. If our faith is in Christ, is founded on Christ, we will continue to serve Him in the midst of problems in life. In Angola, we have several new believers. Some of them had to face persecution due to their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Several of them faced very severe persecution that they were compelled by the community, by their own community to deny Jesus and to go back to their old faith. One of our members who was belonging to a Gauda community was called to the called to their community people and they decided that he should be excommunicated. Three times they called the meeting. Three times he was warned that he will be excommunicated from his community and he will not be permitted to throw water from the common well. He will not be permitted to use anyone for his work or he also will not be used in the work. Even after hearing all these things, it was threatening thing, but he did not fear about all of them. He told them that, I believe the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. He is the only one who can give me peace of life. And he told them that, even if you excommunicate me again and again, I will not deny Jesus. I trust him. I will be a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ all throughout my life. Another member of our church who came to the faith with, uh, with family, that family 
was affected by cancer disease. The disease was affected to the lady of the house. Even when she was laid as a cancer patient, her relatives, the family people, wanted to take them back to the Hindu faith. But she told, whatever may happen, I will not say no to Jesus. Jesus is my savior. I believe him. I trust him. Therefore, I continue to be a servant of Jesus. She is healed from cancer. Now she is a powerful witness of the Lord in her community. What I am saying is that if our faith is founded in Christ, whatever may happen to us, we will be able to withstand all our problems and find security in Christ. Christ is our foundation. Are we sure that we have given our life to Jesus, that Christ is our foundation, our faith is grounded in Christ? Are we sure about this experience? If we know that Christ is our foundation, he will bless us and use us for his glory. All those who have found Christ as the foundation of their life are called to be labor, co-laborers with Christ. That is the second point I want to tell you. That's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 9. We find that for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. We are God's fellow workers. When we are, when we find Jesus as our Savior, when we commit our life to the Lord Jesus, we find that Christ calls us to be his fellow workers. In the Bible we read that several of the people who believed God as their Lord and Master were called out to serve him to go and preach the gospel of Christ to others. And we read of Abraham, the man of man who is our father of faith. Abraham was called by God to go to the place where God was to show him. Abraham obeyed God and he became a blessing to the whole world. God blessed him and made him a great blessing. So he heard the call of God. In the burning bush, God appeared to him and called Moses, Moses, I have heard the cry of the people. I want you to go and deliver them from the clutches of Egyptian Pharaoh. Moses heard the call, obeyed God and became a servant of God. Therefore, he could deliver the people from the bondage of the Egyptian Pharaoh. Again, we read in about the prophet Isaiah, chapter 6. We read that Isaiah, while he was worshipping the Lord, he had the revelation of God as the Holy of the Holies, and he found that he himself was a sinful man, then he heard a call from God, whom shall I send, who will go for us? Isaiah surrendered himself to the Lord and said, God, I am here, send me. I am ready to go to the place where you are sending. Isaiah became a prophet, a great prophet, who could preach the gospel who could preach about the coming of Christ also. The book of Isaiah is a thrilling book, a blessed, a blessed book for each one of us to study. Again, we find that Jesus in his ministry, he called several people and sent, sent them for his ministry. The 12 disciples were chosen by God, by Jesus, and he sent them out to preach the gospel to deliver people from their illness and to cast out demons 
and to give the message to the people where they were sent. Again, we find that 70 were chosen and sent out to be his messengers. After the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus appeared to the disciples who were in closed doors. They were afraid of the Jews. They felt that the Jews who killed their master will be crucifying them also. Therefore, they were sitting in a room with closed doors and windows. We read this in John's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 19 onwards. There we find that Jesus appeared to them. He, even though the doors and the windows were closed, Jesus appeared to them in their midst in the closed room. Jesus showed himself as the one who is risen and living. The same God revealed himself as the powerful one who is able to protect them. Therefore, he pronounced peace to them. Peace be with you was the message Jesus gave to the disciples. They believed that Jesus is going to be with us even though we are in problems, even though we are at the, at the threat of the Jews to be killed, uh, we do not fear them because Jesus is with us. Jesus says even in these days of, of the fear of coronavirus, Jesus tells each one of us when we are in lockdown, when we are not free to do our work, not free to worship together in the churches, but Jesus says, peace be with you. At the same time, Jesus breathed on the disciples and said, just as the Father has sent me, I send you. You go out and preach the gospel to others who have never heard of the message. Therefore, the disciples were asked to wait till they received the fullness of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> we read this in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be empowered to preach the gospel in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Jesus gives us the fullness of the Spirit so that we will be co-laborers with Him. We will work with Him for the salvation of many others around us. Jesus found that this is possible if only the disciples give themselves to the fullness of the Holy Spirit. They waited and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They found Jesus as their Savior and Lord and were empowered so that they could go out and preach the gospel. Peter, after, the, after he received the fullness of the Spirit, he stood up and preached the message of Christ. All those who listened were, were really pricked in their heart and 3,000 people were converted to Jesus. They became Christians. They became believers only because the Holy Spirit came upon them. The Holy Spirit has to come upon us so that we'll be able to give the message to others. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, 36 to 38, we, say, say, we read that Jesus telling to the disciples, the harvest is truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Therefore, for Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. We find the harvest is ready for harvesting. We have to send laborers into the field so that several will find Christ as their savior. Let us be ready to go out to preach the gospel. The Mahatma Church received God's, God, God, God's call to preach the gospel to others. The church was established in 52 AD due to the message of St. Paul, uh, St. Thomas in Kerala. St. Thomas founded the Syrian church in Kerala. 
and we were not able to go out to preach the gospel. There came a time when we heard the message of Christ. The Marthoma Church was a renewed church and we heard the call of God. The people in the church were empowered to go out. Therefore, a team of people came to Angola to preach the gospel to the people of Angola. They were not able to come here if the church would say that we will give you a salary, go and preach. No, there was nobody to give them a salary. They decided that they will come to Angola on faith and therefore they step out, stepped out and came to the Karnataka state. People who did not know the language came here, stayed here and learned the language of the people and started preaching the gospel. Therefore, several of the people in Angola area could find Christ as their savior. Several of the people who were downtrodden, who were under different kinds of persecution could be delivered through the message of Christ. And we could understand, we could establish a church in Angola. From Angola, we could go out to several outstations with the gospel message. Dandeli, Ellapu, Supa, Mundugod, Sirsi, Padanagod, all those places we went and announced the message of Christ. Several of the people believed the Lord and we have churches in all those places. This should happen in each one of our life. If we surrender ourselves to the Lord, He will make us to be His witnesses to the people around us. People who believed the Lord became the people of God in the churches around us. Therefore, I appeal to you that you should you should surrender your life to Jesus, that He will empower you with your with the Holy Spirit to be co-laborers with Him. We had an evangelist called Jayaprabhu, who is no more, a very earnest evangelist. He could preach the gospel anywhere and everywhere. Even if he is sent on an annual leave, he would carry gospel portions and uh, Bible tracts and uh, distribute to the people who travel with him in the bus. He could uh, go to the Taluk office or district uh, collector's office and meet the very important people in the world. And uh, he could uh, share the message of Christ. He was a powerful witness of the Lord. This should happen. If it should happen, we should give ourselves to the hands of the Lord. We had another lady who was in our hospital admitted. She was brought from Tamil Nadu. She fell into the well and uh, broke her spinal cord and became a paralyzed lady who could not sit or stand. She had to lie down. But this lady was a witness of the Lord in the hospital where people, patients were coming. She was given a bed near the window of a hospital ward. There he would get ready and lie there and when the patients pass through, he would call them and speak to them about the Lord Jesus Christ. She could distribute tracts to the patients who come to the hospital. Kanyamal was the name of the lady. She also is no more. And we find that this can happen to each one of our life. We can be used by the Lord to be his witnesses in the places where we are. Let us understand that Christ has given us the foundation on him. We have put our foundation on Christ and if we are on Christ, we will be able to be his witnesses. We will be co-laborers with him. There is a I read about, about a person 
a very important person, an educated person who was traveling in the European airline and uh, the airline was initially launched. This man was given a first class ticket. He was sitting in the first class room. The air hostess came with a very costly drink to serve to him. He said, I do not use alcohol, please take it back. She went back and brought the drink in a very fallacious tray and served to him again. He said, no, I am a Christian, I do not use alcohol. Then she reported it to the manager of the airline and the manager came with a decorated tray and uh, insisted that he should receive it because it is a complimentary from the airlines. And he said, you may serve it to your pilot, the pilot who is flying the flight. He, then the manager said, if I serve this to the pilot, he will be, he'll be drunk, the uh, uh, airline, uh, air, Aeroplane will be cra crashed and then this man said, if I drink it, my faith will be crushed. Therefore, he refused to accept it. He said, I am also on duty as just as your pilot is on duty. I am on duty in the, I am in the service of the Lord. I am fully on duty and I cannot Bring this alcohol. He refused to accept it. This should be our attitude to life. We should know for which, for what, what reason God has called us. If we have dedicated our, ourselves to the Lord, we will find strength. We will find real empowering of the Holy Spirit so that we will be able to be co-laborates with him. Just as I was sharing you about the foundation of our faith, let us be sure that we are founded on the faith of Christ. Christ is our foundation. Let us be co-laborates with him so that God can powerfully use us for his glory. May God's name be glorified through the word of God. May the Holy Spirit Bless each one of us with his word so that we will be co-laborers with him. We would like to thank Reverend Dr. K. M. Samuel for sharing a very stimulating and inspiring message this morning. Once again, we would like to thank him for accepting this invitation. And we pray to God that God will continue to use him mightily in his vineyard. The month of August will be observed as the month of missions. Hence, throughout the month of August, the UBM Church Council Outreach Department has organized various webinars in order to equip and encourage members to have an insight of our church roles and responsibilities in mission and also to be actively involved in serving God. Following are the details of various webinars. Today, Sunday 16th August, a webinar has been organized from 5 p.m. onwards on the theme Laying a Foundation, focusing on church planting ministries. The guest speaker for this webinar will be Pastor Dinesh Chawla. On Sunday 30th August, a webinar has been organized which will be held from 5 p.m. onwards. The theme for this webinar is Priesthood of All Believers. And the guest speaker is Dr. Lorraine Francis. Further details of the mentioned programs will be shared through various mediums. We encourage all members to attend these webinars and be enriched, equipped and be blessed in serving in the Kingdom of God. The Outreach Department of UBM Church has released an online form in order to systematically identify members who would like to serve through this wing of the church. Since the need is diverse, we plan to gather this information 
and delegate responsibilities to those who have responded to contribute in the area of interest and expertise. Requesting members to prayerfully and ardently participate and support us in this attempt of channelizing our resources and reaching out as a church. The Silver Jubilee Scholarship Form for Sunday School Children and Golden Jubilee Scholarship Form for College Going Children are available with the pastors. Following is the eligibility criteria. Silver Jubilee Scholarship KG to 10 Standard Scholarship is awarded on the basis of monthly income being less than rupees 15,000 per month, including working children. Applicants should be actively involved in church activities. Golden Jubilee Scholarship College-going students 11 Standard and above Scholarship is awarded on the basis of monthly income being less than rupees 15,000 per month, including working children. 50 marks to be obtained by the candidate in their respective fields of studies, such as art, science and commerce. Scholarship is also available to student pursuing job-oriented courses conducted by recognized institutes. Applicants should be actively involved in the church activities. Requesting eligible candidates to kindly contact your respective church pastors at the earliest and collect the respe respective forms. The last date for submission of the forms will be next Sunday, that is 23rd August 2020. During the closing hymn, we shall be gathering the offering. You can set aside your offering and transfer the same to the detailed mention on the screen. We thank you all for your generous contribution and support thus far. This has greatly supported the ministry of our church. May God bless you. As we gather the offering, let us join together in singing from English hymn, hymn number 420. We shall sing verses 1 and 2 only. English hymn number 420. We shall sing verses 1 and 2 only. Let us look to God in prayer as we thank Him for the offering received. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank You for the offering that You have given to us, Lord. Thank You for the gifts and the blessings that we have, Lord. And we bring each and everything into Your hands, Lord, as we offer it into Your presence, Lord. Lord, we pray that You use the gifts that we come bring into Your presence for Your matchless name and for Your glory, Lord, and for the building of Your kingdom. This we pray and ask in the master's name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.
as our Lord has commanded us to pray and intercede for one another. Let us join in intercession. The congregation's response after every prayer of intercession will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the dedication of people to build the church. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we dedicate the people that are building your church and are working for the ministry of the church building, Lord. We give them into your midst, Lord, as you guide them and you hold their hands and you take them in their way, Lord. Lord, we commit them and the work that they are doing into your hands, Lord. We pray that your church grow and build even in these times, Lord. This we pray and ask in the name of our Lord. Congregation response, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the true fellowship of one church, one faith, one Lord and one church. Lord, we pray that the churches unite during this time of trials, Lord, and temptations, Lord. We pray that all the fellowship that we conduct through this online service, Lord, be in one name and one faith and in your glory, Lord. We pray that as we unite for the fellowship, each and every heart come to your presence and for your glory, Lord. Congregation response, Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for the sower in mission field to have success for the glory of God. Lord, we pray and commit each and every pastor and each and every evangelist who is in the mission field working right now, Lord. We pray that you give them whatever they need and whatever their desires are, Lord. Lord, as they work for your glory and for your mission, Lord, we pray that you be with them and help them in each and everything. And we pray that you give them their heart's desires. Congregation response, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the UBM churches and its various departments and ministries and further vision and mission. Lord, we pray for our UBM churches as a whole, Lord. We pray and commit each and every activity and each and every department of the UBM church that is taking part in your mission and your work, Lord. Lord, we pray and commit each and every minister and each and every uh, worker in your labor, Lord. We pray and commit the future vision that we have as a UBM family, Lord. And as we fellowship through this online worship service, Lord, we pray that you be with us and help us in the growing of our church and in the fellowship that we have, Lord. Lord, we pray and commit each and everything that we desire and we want in your hands. Congregation response, Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Let us join together in saying the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction in faith. May the Lord God Almighty who calls us, commissions us and establish us in his disciples to go into the world and preach the gospel, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. May God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.